Hi everyone and welcome to episode 16 of our Configmas 2022. My name is Johan and in this session you'll learn about using Microsoft Connected Cache to improve deployment and content distribution in a Microsoft environment. Now, Microsoft Connected Cache, or MCC for short, is simply put a cache server intended to reduce the network impact of Windows 10 and Windows 11 devices for the type of content it supports. Now, MCC will happily cache content that is deployed or managed by delivery optimization in Windows. Fun fact about delivery optimization is that it was introduced with Windows 10 in 2015, but it came as a company acquisition that Microsoft did back in 2013 when they acquired Panda Networks. Now, Panda Networks had been around for about a decade by then, developing peer-to-peer -peer solutions, but that technology became the Libre Organization in Windows. Now, I kind of think it's a little bit ironic or, or even funny that Microsoft Connected Cache is currently licensed together with Config Manager. And the reason I think it's a little bit ironic or funny is that it cannot peer a single byte of the content that Config Manager uses. And I do not count expressed installation files because that implementation was not good. But luckily, since it found a home with the Config Manager team, we can use it for other stuff, like peer-to-peering -peer updates to Windows components, like peer-to-peering -peer Windows Update handled by Windows Update for Business or controlled by it. And we can use it for Win32 apps in Intune, Office updates, and a few other things. So that means demo time. So here I have a network layout of a distributed environment. I have one cache server here, and I have another cache server down here. By default, a Windows client, when it needs content provided by the labor organization, it's going to reach out into one or many Microsoft Update servers and ask for the content. That server may very well reply with a file, or it can reply with instructions to say, hey, I think you have a friend over there that might have that content. How about go ask that friend for the file instead? Now, by implementing cache servers, we can of course reduce the number of round trips heavily to internet and instead having it either done locally on a subnet, if you have a lot of clients on that location, or maybe on a more centralized server, if you have subnets with not that many clients, but you still want to reduce the traffic that happens over internet. Because what happens is, if a client requests a file from the cache server, obviously, if it has it in the cache, it's going to be replied from that cache. If the cache server doesn't have the content, the cache server is going to request that from Microsoft Update servers, download it and put it in the cache and also download it back to the client. Now, back to the product for a second. Here is the official documentation for Microsoft Connected Cache, and I will provide a link to this in the section below here in the video. For those of you that attended our CM Trace session earlier, you know that Config Manager license for it is included in most Intune licenses as well. So for example, these guys here, the rare exception being the Microsoft 365 Business Premium Plan, it does not include Config Manager. For those of you in the education space, sure enough, Config Manager is also included in the A3 and A5 licenses. There will be, down the road, standalone versions of the connected cache available, has been in development for a good few years now, but they are not available just yet. So for now, you're stuck with Config Manager if you want to leverage the cache server. Now, in terms of setting up the site server for, or a DP for connected cache, it's very simple. You go to your site server, go to one of your distribution points, and you configure it to be a cache server. You define the space. I usually set it to anything between 100 and 150. You usually don't need more, but that's, that's the cache size. Behind the scenes, what happens is that every time a client is downloading content, it's going to download that to the cache itself. So if I go to my distribution point, head over here, here's my cache, and here you can see that it has downloaded from different type of uh, update service from Microsoft. So for example, this one here, which is heavily used for Intune 32 apps, I have a good chunk of content in this one. 
Uh, this one here is for regular Windows update. Not too much of that one, but a little bit of data at least. I can also tap into this data from PowerShell or through IS Manager. So if I go here and, for example, go to the uh, download Windows update one that I showed you and check the monitoring of that one, you can see the statistics, the hit rate, etc. Same thing for, say, this one here. I see some statistics. I can also pull out data from the cache server through PowerShell. So by asking this URL here, I can get information from the cache server. That information I can use, for example, to figure out the number of active connections at the moment. We often use that to track usage of the different cache servers. We can figure out how much content we have from all in all from the cache server. We can do some clever math, basically a division from it and see that sure enough, we have this, this giving us a percentage of this. Now, for this to work, we must tell our client which cache server to use. And there are a few different ways of configuring this. Let's start with Config Manager. So if I go to my site server, you can go to Client Settings. And you can set Deliver Authorization to stamp the cache servers depending on boundary groups. But this obviously assumes that your network in Config Manager mimics the physical network. Other options is to set it through group policy. So if I go to my domain controller, here is a policy for delivery optimization. And as you can see here, if I go to policies, admin templates, Windows components, delivery optimization. I can specify the cache server host name or IP address here. And I can do some other configurations for DO as well. Other options I have are DHCP scope options. And that is assuming that you set a source location or source from it. That's a policy that you configure. But once you have that one in play, you can actually set a scope option for the server, which may be useful if you have clients that are roaming around a lot in different locations quickly. Oliver Kieselbach, he has a good blog post about that. And as the others, I will put that link below. But his connected cache post from uh, 2020, if you scroll down a little bit in that one, it goes through the uh, DCP configuration, how to set it up, and how you can verify this later uh, on the client side of things. Another option is to do it through policies in Intune. So here I have uh, my Intune uh, admin portal. If I go to configuration profiles, made a little bit wider, but I do have one for deliver optimization MCC. And if you check my settings for this one, you can see that I had to find which cache host to use this one. You can also do this through downright registry edits on the client because this information is just written to the registry. So that works as well if you want to script it. But that is pretty much all you have to do to get this going. Set up the server and configure the clients to use it. I do have a blog post here as well. Takes you through some additional scenarios for a connected cache. For example, to use it when you have a lot of deployments that you do when 32 app deployments or autopilot deployments, uh, say in a staging network, you can uh, leverage this. So all in all, good stuff. This was all for today. Thank you so much for joining and I hope to see you again tomorrow.